God is waiting on the warrior in us to realize that we reap what we sow. God is waiting on the warrior in you and me to realize that we reap what we sow. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9, it says, Do not be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. You know, I have a, um, a pepper here. It kind of looks a little rough. Um, it was pulled out of our garden. We have a small garden. And, um, you know, my, my wife worked so hard to, to plant in our little garden. But, you know, sometimes the sun will be so scorching hot that the garden won't get enough water. And we have to make sure we give it extra water. And then some weeks, it'll just flood out the garden. You know, I realize that life is like that. You know, sometimes you just feel like everything's coming against you. Your life's getting flooded by, by one tough circumstance after another. But God wants you to know that, that he's not a liar. He, he will not be mocked. You know, if you're sowing good seed, if you're making right choices, um, he's going to bless you for them. And, to, you know, and, and he wants you to stand on that promise. But if you're, if you're sowing bad seeds... You have to understand he's also not going to be mocked. He's not mad at us. He's not going to pour out his wrath on us. He poured out the wrath on the cross. You know, Jesus already paid for it all on the cross, but God put a law in effect that we, we will sow what we reap. I mean, we, I mean, we will reap what we sow. And that's not him punishing us. That's just the law he put in place. And I know a lot of people feel like, well, you know, I, I do sow good seed. And, and, I, and I feel like that, you know, God still doesn't bless me enough. And so I wanted to, to start by, by thinking about some scenarios where maybe we're sowing bad seed and we don't even realize we're sowing bad seed. And so I've written down some examples. Um, these, are, these are ways we sow bad seed and often we're not even convicted by it. We're not even convicted by it. Uh, one of the areas is the lack of love in our life. Um, you know, Jesus says in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, he says, This one command I, le I le leave with you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you must love one another. Then verse 35, Jesus says, And the world will know you are my disciples by your love. Well, if we're not sowing love into our, into our life, if we're not sowing love into our ministry, then there's going to be side effects to that. That's the greatest commandment of all that Jesus gave in Matthew 22, 37 and 38. Um, it's the greatest gift of all we see in 1 Corinthians 13. So it, to not love, if, if we're not sowing love, then it's going to, we're not honoring the greatest commandment that God gave us. So there's going to be, there's, that's going to cause our harvest, um, you know, it's going to hinder the harvest that we need in our life. Another thing that we sow, and often we don't even realize we're sinning, and, and we're often not even convicted by it, is, is laziness. Um, in, in Proverbs, it, it talks about laziness. But in James 4.17, it says, when you know the things you ought to do and you don't do them, that is sin. And we may say, well, I'm not lazy. I work hard, or I'm, I'm always busy, but... Are we lazy spiritually? In other words, are we fulfilling the Great Commission? Are we actually telling people about Christ? Are we, are we, you know, is our life about our kingdom or God's kingdom? And if we're sowing, if our if our goal is to sow just to build our kingdom, then why would God bless that when we're being disobedient to focus on His kingdom? Another way that um, you know, we sow bad seeds and often don't realize it is complaining. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 uh, says that God's will for our life is that we would 
be thankful in all circumstances. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us to do all things without complaining and arguing. You know, a lot of times we're sowing complaining and we're not being thankful and praising God and so in doing so that there, there comes a, a bad harvest to that. Uh, another area that, that will, may really surprise you um, is jealousy. You know, the Bible says in, in James 3.15 that jealousy is it's, it's of this world, it's unspiritual, it's demonic. Um, wow, it's not God's kind of wisdom? Wow, that's d demonic? Are you serious? Yes, that's what it says in James 3.15. Now, if, if, we're, if we're sowing jealousy, complaining, laziness, lack of love, um, this one's going to shock you, uh, even worrying. You know, Romans 14, 23 says that anything done without faith is sin. Oh my gracious, look at all these things we're sowing, and we don't even realize we're sowing it. Um, and then, of course, pride. You know, we sow pride almost every single day. And, and one of the scariest verses in the Bible is in James 4, verses 7 through 10, where it talks about pride, and, and where it talks about that God opposes the proud, but he favors the humble. I mean, he, wow. Now I'm asking you, are God's waiting on the warrior in us to realize that we, we will reap, we will harvest what we sow. Are we sowing worry and lack of love, laziness, complaining, jealousy, pride? Because if we're sowing those things, then the harvest we get back is not going to be good. We're still forgiven through Jesus Christ, but we must be careful of what we're sowing. What if you flip those things? What if you're sowing lots of love? What if you're sowing lots of, of focus and work into the kingdom? What if you're focused in lots of praise and being thankful instead of complaining? What if you're sowing uh, you know, lots of humility instead of pride? Well, I, God, God's saying he will not be mocked. That if you know what we sow, he's gonna he's gonna reap. We're gonna reap. So he he's gonna bless us. A lot of people look at the passage that I just read to you, and, and they're scared of it. Um, I'm encouraged by it. You know, I know that if I'm if I will if I want to make friends, I just have to be a friend. Go be friendly, and I'll make friends. Um, you know, a devotion that that I'm gonna be doing real soon is on giving. Um, I know that if, I, if I'm needing um, finances in my life, I need to give, and God will give back. Uh, one of the funniest things I get to see, I, I love to feed people. I do. I, just, I love just blessing people with food or drink, but it, it, it really is like a game that I play with God because no sooner than I give somebody food, somebody gives me food. Um, it, it's amazing to me. You know, with, with my children, I've got four children, and with my children, I, I, I remind them all the time, just, just honor the Lord and honor mommy and daddy, and you will be blessed. You will be blessed. And I love showing them that. You know, I want to I take this to another level now, though. Um, I, think it's, I think it's very important um, that I share something with you. Christ... He sowed into suffering. Uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he's crying out to his father, he says, Father, if, if there be any other way for this cup to pass from me, but my, not my will, but your will be done. Christ sowed into the cup of suffering. And by doing that, um, because he was willing to sow into suffering for us, we receive eternal salvation through him. Had he not drank of that cup, had he not sowed of that cup of suffering, where would my salvation come from? It wouldn't come from me. My righteousness is filthy rags to God. We would still be under law and not grace. But now I want this to really bless you because when the Lord showed me this, it, it truly did bless me. Often we have to drink from that cup of, of suffering. And I'm going to focus more on this in a, in, a, in a devotional I'm going to be doing on persecution. But I just want to throw it out now to encourage you. When you go through a cup of suffering in your life, when you're going through a battle that 
you you have to make a choice. Do I do I do I go through this cup of suffering, or do I not? Um, and sometimes you may feel like you didn't have the choice. It's just you it, you're going through it. Maybe it maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's uh, the death of a loved one. Maybe it's you know something else traumatic. But I. I'm not taking anything away from that because I, I, I want you to know I have empathy for you and I hurt for you. But I want to show you something beautiful. That in the midst of your cup of suffering that you're going through, you're also sowing through it. God is going to use it to bring salvation to someone. Now none of us can die for the sins of the world and bring salvation to the world. That's not my point. But people get saved according to our testimony. People can get saved through our cup of suffering. So if I avoid the cups of suffering in my life, I'm hurting other people who are going to get saved through hearing my testimony, through who are going to get saved through the trials of by fire that I was going to go through. And I can truly look back at my past and the cups of suffering that I've had to go through and, and now better understand that a lot of people have gotten saved through that journey. But had I not drank of that cup of suffering, they, they may not have. And Christ's example of that is the most important example of that. But I'm telling you this to encourage you that you reap what you sow and I, in, in every area of your life. In every area of your life. I, I, I want to bless you and tell you that the more you sow into your spiritual intimacy, the more you will reap spiritual intimacy. You know, Jesus, he had a way of, of praying about eternal things. Um, he, he prayed about, about things that had eternal value. He didn't worry or stress about things of this world. Sadly, we tend to worry and stress about the things of this world and not lose a bit of sleep over eternity issues. Um, you know, it's... I shared this at a church one time, and this is not mine. I'm not... I'm, not, I'm, I'm actually quoting this right to you right now. Um, but I heard it, and I, I quoted it at a church one time that I spoke at, and it goes like this. Um... Every day people are dying and going to hell and we don't give a damn. But yet more people care about the fact that I just said damn than the fact that people are dying and going to hell every day. That's, that's so sad. But it's truth. Um, people get so wrapped up in, in petty things. Um, things of this world and not things of eternal value. We need to be sowing into people's eternal life. We need to be sowing into um, people's salvation. Um, but we're not. More people are going to be focused today on you know, what they're going to watch on TV or what they're going to eat for their meal or you know, what entertainment are they going to get wrapped up into. Or um, More people are going to be focused on you know, making money to buy that thing they want than they are the fact that they could be sowing into the mission field. They could be sowing into you know, spreading the gospel in some way. And um, God is waiting on the warrior in us to, to believe him and to realize that we truly do reap what we sow. I, um, I remember when I was playing football, um, I decided one day that I was going to not wear certain pads um, and I got injured, and my coach couldn't believe that I had taken certain pads out of my, I didn't wear certain pieces of equipment in the game, and I did it so I could be lighter and faster, um, but because I sewed that, I reaped an injury, and um, I remember as I had to sit out a few games because of my injury, how, how terrible that felt to not be on the battlefield with my brothers as the leader. Um, it was it was terrible, but I reaped what I sowed. Um, in life, we make mistakes, and in making those mistakes, we often have to to reap the harvest of that. 
But be encouraged, please. Every day is a new day to sow new seed. Every day. God's mercy is new. The book of Lamentations says that God's mercy is new each morning. So if you have sowed bad seed, okay, you got to deal with the bad harvest. But you can start today fresh, uh, sowing new seed, good seed. And God will honor and bless that as the days go on. Let me, uh, let me stop and pray with you right now. Father God, I just thank you so much. And I just pray for anyone who receives this teaching that, that they will see the blessing of truly uh, knowing that you keep your word, that you are not a liar, that, that we do reap what we sow. And to see that as a good thing, a great thing. If we sow into Jesus, we reap uh, a harvest of eternal life, eternal salvation. The more we sow into your kingdom purposes, the more fulfilled and sustained our life is. Father, I just pray your blessing over anyone who is receiving this teaching. That, Father, that for any of them who have not received Christ, that they would so at this very moment. Father, I, I pray your blessing over every opportunity that you give me to teach your holy word. I thank you, Lord, that you would use a wretched sinner like me. Um, and Father, I just I plead the blood of Jesus uh, over, the, over the body of Christ. Uh, and, and, and it is in the name of Jesus that I do pray and praise. Amen.